You think you're safe? Your mind is under attack. You think you're in control of your own thoughts? Think again. Most thoughts that you have are not your own. But where do we get our thoughts from? Parents, school, family, friends, the media, social media, YouTube, etc, etc. Most of our thoughts and opinions are not our own. We just think that they are our own and therefore we believe they're true. Because it's easy and because it makes us fit in. And it's kind of how modern society works. As a traveling businessman who has built two nine-figure companies, I can tell you that most people become more and more weak and soft. People are way more easily offended. They are stirred up by things that really don't matter. Things like fairness or work-life balance. This stuff becomes more important. I don't agree with those concepts personally. I think there is even no such thing as absolute fairness. Life is not fair. For me, it's all about performance and output. Why is the Western world so messed up? Every day we're bombarded with negativity, distractions and countless opinions. So how do I keep the bad stuff out? I've built a fortress around my mind. A fortress so strong it's indestructible. And today I'm giving you the blueprint. I'm going to explain exactly how I protect my mind and this way I don't sabotage myself and I build the foundation for peak performance. Chapter 1. Foundation. My values and principles. You know, in order to build a high building, you need a strong foundation. In business and life, values and principles are my foundation. They are mindset stuff. I always prioritize mindset and values over anything else when I look for an employee. Sure, there are other things that matter in life, but if your mindset is weak, everything else will fall apart. Even if you're a super skilled person, if you're weak and soft, you'll get nothing done. Mindset always wins. So the pillars of protecting my mind and my mindset for me are the following. Perspicacity. You need to have a sharp mind and you need to be able to understand opinions, observe your surroundings, and you need to understand the information that you get inside of your head. You need to become aware. What is this newspaper article, TV show, movie, person, social media post really telling me? What do they want me to believe? What does it mean on a deeper level if I believe that? Who benefits from me believing that? Keep your eyes open. Self-reflection. Most people are completely unaware of their thoughts. They cannot trace where it comes from and why they believe what they believe. For example, I am opposed to 90% of pharma pills. This makes me kind of an outsider. I have good and logical reasons for refusing unnatural medicine. But lately a lot of people got very mad at me for thinking like that. Why? Is it really their own thoughts? Or are these thoughts and opinions installed by the pharmaceutical industry? And would this industry benefit from that, yes or no? I used to think very differently, but through self-reflection, I was able to question, update and improve my opinions because I got informed better. Most people can't do that and that's why they lose the battle. I am my best friend no matter what. I don't care who is speaking to me. For me, there is one hard rule. I am my own best friend. That doesn't mean I'm harmful to other people. It just means that I will never sabotage myself or act against my own best interest. I am the defender and protector of my mind and my interests. I refuse to believe anything that puts me in a bad position or makes me weak. I make sure to forgive myself every day, even if I did something that I don't like. No one really understands this or talks about it and I don't get it. The number one enemy of yourself is you. So stop being your worst enemy, start being your best friend. Chapter 2. Work Values Next to protecting my health, the most important thing for me is to protect my ability to get work done. This is where the majority of my time and energy flows to. I want to be efficient and I want my output to be fantastic. For some reason, in the Western world, work ethic is under attack. By taking social media too seriously, people become weak-minded and soft. This is not how you or I could succeed in business. So you need work values that must be set in stone in order to be competitive. Yes, people in the Western world get soft and lazy. But the West is not the whole world. Asia is completely different and they will simply crash the West, take over in the global competing markets. I can't understand why we would let that happen. It's sad, but whatever, I can't change that and maybe I'll have to move to Asia in the future. 
who knows? So here are my ironclad work values. I'm always on time. Of course, there could be emergencies, but I make it a habit to be on time. Be professional. If I do something, I'll do it right. That means on time and completely. And if I can't do something, I will decommit. But it's important to do things right. I will leave everything and everyone better than before. That doesn't mean I'm always nice, I can be harsh, but I add value to people's lives. Win-win or no deal. I refuse to do one-sided deals. I believe that win-lose deals are bad for both sides from a long-term perspective. So I will never do that. I am owning everything in my world. There is no one else to blame. For anything that happens in my life, I am fully responsible. It does not matter how bad other people or the economy are. It's all in my own hands. Speed. Everything must happen quickly and efficiently. I cannot afford to waste any time. Whatever I do, I make sure I finish it fast. Speed is extremely important, especially in business. Always be efficient. It's so easy to fall into the trap of overpaying for things your business does not really need. If you really need something expensive, try to make it cost efficient. Never just buy fancy stuff because you think you can afford it. Most startups go bankrupt because they spend way too much money on things they don't really need. Like a prestigious office or whatever vanity projects. Focus on what you really need to get the job done as opposed to what you want because you think you're cool. Chapter 3. Weeding out the negative. Your mind is like a garden. You have to remove the weeds, aka negative thoughts, if you only want to have the flowers and fruits that you actually want and nothing else. The same goes for thoughts and beliefs. Most people allow any random negative or bullshit thought into their mind. They watch TV and social media and get fed with so much bad information. I don't allow that to happen to me. I weed out the negative negative thoughts and reframe them in a positive and beneficial way. For example, if I'm having a bad day and I feel tired and get nothing done, I make sure I do a lot of small easy tasks because there's always stuff to do, right? And I also take time to actively relax or do a workout. There's always things to do, even little things that make me feel good about myself. And the next day will be much better. I make an extra effort to reflect and identify negative thoughts or beliefs about myself. And I have this thing that I'm a perfectionist. Honestly, I don't really like most of my work. I feel it's never good enough. And this is where weeding out things comes into play. I perfectly understand that I view my work as not good enough. So I ask myself, have you worked genuinely hard on this? Have you double checked it? Have you gone through improvement cycles? If the answer is yes, I will be at peace with whatever I'm putting out. I have weeded out my negative thought and I have dealt with it in a productive way. I make sure my perfectionism, which is rooted in fear and self-doubt, doesn't stop me. Chapter 4. Happiness is overrated. I don't put too much importance on feeling happy or ecstatic or passionate all the time. Most of the time, for most of the things I do, I am simply not. Am I passionate about workouts, eating healthy and most tasks at work, accounting, taxes and stuff like that? No, most of the time I'm not and I would rather be at a party in a beach club in Mykonos. You caught me. But I want to be successful, I want to be in shape, I want to be healthy and I want to perform as an entrepreneur and that's more important for me. Happiness and being fulfilled all the time is anyway kind of a weird concept. Who needs to be happy all the time? Why are people so obsessed with it? If you're healthy and not homeless, you're lucky enough and you should be happy and thankful already, in my opinion. Most people don't live a life as good as you do. Be happy about it. You don't need so many material things to be happy. Sure, I like money and I'm absolutely going after it, but to me, happiness isn't my main driver. Success and duty is more motivating for me. I want to win and I want to do what's necessary. I believe I'm always some version of happy and I thank God every day that I have this this fantastic and hard life. Your mind is your most valuable asset. Guard it, nurture it, and above all, respect it. The way you think, the beliefs you hold, they all shape your reality. So build that fortress, create your core values, weed out the negatives, and be stoic. Your mindset is worth protecting. Don't chase happiness. Focus on building yourself and giving value to others. And this way, you will be the most happy anyway. If you're truly ready to do the work, then you need to watch this next video about how to reprogram your mindset to make more money.